Hey, welcome. So if you've been following me, you know that I've been somewhat critical of the Canadian immigration system, especially as it relates to the spousal sponsorship application. But the open work permit program is one that I genuinely feel makes it easy for dependents to earn income in Canada while they wait for their spouse's education to complete or their temporary work permits to run their course. With an open work permit, in some cases, the entire family can find employment, gain meaningful experience, become financially stronger and above all, be with their loved ones. Now, I've lived and worked in the US for over eight years and I know that America is still struggling to implement something like this. So good job, Canada. You won this round. Obviously, there are other aspects where America is leaps and bounds ahead, but you don't have to worry about those right now. That comes much later when you're older, have arthritis and are filled with a little bit of regret. So in this video, we'll understand what an open work permit is, who can apply, how to know if you're eligible, with a special focus on spouses that are dependent on someone who has a student or a temporary work permit visa. We'll also understand if you can apply for an open work permit if you're being sponsored, whether inland or outland. Finally, we'll locate the application packet and understand where to submit that online. So open up your favorite website, let's begin. All right, so let's start at the beginning. I want to bring your attention to this help center page. I'm going to link it in the description below and it defines what an open work permit is. So an open work permit is a work permit that is not job specific, meaning you don't need an offer letter from your employer. Also, you don't need an LMIA, which is a labor market impact assessment. All right, so as long as you meet these two criteria, you can apply for open work permit. Then there's an option to get the fee list. So if you click on that, you are going to get to this page, scroll down and under work permits, if you scroll down, you'll see the fee is 155 Canadian dollars per person. Okay. And then if the number of persons applying increase, the fee also increases. So that's pretty much it about what an open work permit is. Now let's talk about who can apply for the open work permit. So I want to bring your attention to this help center page who can apply for an open work permit. I'm going to link it in the description below. It has a list of 11 categories under which you can apply for an open work permit. So in this video, we are going to be covering a few of these categories, but the application process will be pretty similar for all the programs. Okay. So if you understand how to apply for open work permit for one of these, you can actually do the application for any one of these categories, depending on which one you fall under. All right. All right. So let's start with the first one an international student who graduated from a designated learning institution. So if you did your higher education in Canada that led to a degree and your college falls under the list of designated learning institutions and is eligible for post-graduation work permit, then you can apply for an open work permit. So if you click on the designated learning link, it's going to bring you to this page. Let's click on inside Canada graduates for the purpose of this video. If you scroll down and click again on designated learning institution, it is going to bring you to this page where if you scroll down, you can select your province where you did your education from, let's say Ontario. And then it's going to give you a list of colleges which may or may not be eligible for postgraduate work permit. So as you can see, there's a bunch of colleges here which are not eligible as it says no here. So you're simply going to sort this for yes. And all the colleges that say yes are eligible for post-graduation work permit. So if you did your graduation from any of these colleges that say yes here, there's a bunch of them, you are eligible for open work permit. All right, so next up in the list is a student who's no longer able to meet the costs of your studies, which is a destitute student. So I'm gonna link this page of Humanitarian Reasons International Mobility Program, and that explains all about the destitute students. So if you qualify as a destitute student, which means for the reasons that are listed here, you can no longer afford your tuition, then you may be eligible to apply for an open work permit, all right? Okay, so next up is you already have an employer specific work permit, but are being abused or at risk of being abused. So you can click this link to read about what abuse is, what categories it falls under. And if you fall under any of these categories, you may be eligible. We're not going to spend much time on this field, but you have the page, it's linked in the description below. If you do qualify, then you can use it to apply, okay? Next up, applied for permanent residence in Canada. So now this is where it gets complicated. So we are going to break this down. So what you're going to do is you're going to scroll down and click on this link, answer a few questions. This is where we are going to break down permanent residence in Canada category, okay? So you get to this link, gives you a basic definition on type of work permits, but you scroll down and this is where you answer a few questions to understand whether you're eligible, okay? So under what type of work will you do in Canada? 
I have a feeling most of you will not fall under these categories, so just select my job isn't on the list. Then another bullet is going to open up. This is where you are going to select already living or working in Canada and wanting to stay permanently, the third category or the third bullet. All right. So once you select that, another bullet is going to open up. Which of the following best describes your situation? So these are all programs where you've applied or are going to apply for permanent residence. And we are going to look at each of them one by one. All right. So number one, you've applied for permanent residence under Express Entry. So you're going to click this and hit submit and you're going to get to this page. So it says you have applied for permanent residence under Express Entry, you may be eligible. So if you've done your application under Express Entry for PR, then if you meet these three conditions, you may be eligible to apply. So number one, you should already be in Canada. Number two, your work permit is due to expire within four months, which means you should already have a work permit. Number three, you've applied for PR under these programs. So as long as you've applied under any of these four programs and you also meet the other two conditions, you may be eligible for open work permit. The reason I say you may be eligible because you also have to meet the general eligibility criteria. Okay. And to find out what the general eligibility criteria are, you're going to click this link and then it gives you a list of general eligibility criteria, which you need to satisfy to apply for any kind of work permit. All right. So it's pretty straightforward. You can read through those. We are going to come back to these later, but I just wanted to show you what the general criteria page is. All right. So that is where you can apply for open work permit. If you've done your express entry application and you're already in Canada. All right. So let's look at the next one. Remember, we are still in the applied for permanent residence in Canada category. Okay. So you're going to select my job isn't on the list. Then again, already living or working in Canada. Scroll down. We just looked at express entry. So now we are going to look at applied or applying for permanent residence on paper. Okay. So if you fall under this category, just hit submit. So when you apply on paper, remember, this is not online. When you apply on paper for your permanent residence, whether yourself or are being sponsored, then you may be able to apply for open work permit. So basically when you have applied on paper for your PR, the open work permit will fall under two different categories. Number one is the bridging open work permit. And number two is the regular open work permit. So let's look at the bridging open work permit first. So it says here, if you're in Canada, that condition is already satisfied. Your work permit is due to expire within four months, which means you're still on a work permit and it's not expired yet. And your paper application was complete or has received positive eligibility assessment for these programs, provincial nominee, caring for Canada class, caring for people with medical needs or agri-food pilot. If you've applied for any of these four programs, and you also meet these two criteria. So these three criteria in total, plus you meet the general eligibility requirements, which we looked at earlier, then you may be able to apply for a bridging open work permit. So what is a bridging open work permit? So if you click on this link, it basically defines what a bridging open work permit is. It lets you keep working while you wait for the results of your permanent residence application. So if you've applied for your PR and are waiting for the results, you may be eligible for bridging open work permit. So if you've applied for permanent residence using express entry and you've applied under any of these three programs, then as long as you meet all these criteria, you can apply for a bridging open work permit. So you're obviously in Canada and then you either have a work permit or have an expired work permit, but you've maintained your status, which means you've applied for a renewal of your work permit at least 30 days before your work permit is going to expire or you're eligible to restore your status. And you can read all about these in the links that are mentioned here. So if you meet any one of these three categories here and all the other categories here, then you can apply for a bridging open work permit under express entry. So the other categories are you should be the principal applicant. You've submitted a complete application and passed the completeness check, which means you must have received an acknowledgement of receipt or AOR. Remember, this is a requirement for bridging open work permit under the express entry program. All right. So if you meet all this criteria under express entry, then you can apply for a bridging open work permit, which is essentially an open work permit. All right. Next, if you've applied for a provincial nominee program, then you'll have two options online via express entry or on paper. So if you select online, you'll get the list of criteria. Again, it's pretty similar to the express entry program. 
but you need an acknowledgement of receipt okay and it's mentioned here we send this letter to your account after we get your application so you need an acknowledgement of receipt in order to apply for an open work permit a bridging open work permit when you apply under express entry if you select the on paper option then you don't have the acknowledgement of receipt option but your application has to be approved in principle so what does approved in principle mean if you click on that link it explains approved in principle means that you've received a letter from ircc stating that you meet the permanent residence eligibility requirements but you still have to pass the medical background checks if needed for you and your family members which means your application is now past the acknowledgement of receipt phase and it's in the background and medical check phase. So that's when the application is considered approved in principle. All right, so that is the difference between online and offline, okay? Online via express entry, you need the AOR, and on paper, you need the approved in principle, which means passing the eligibility assessment, all right? And you will need to attach the letter that states that you've passed the eligibility assessment for PR from IRCC. And then there are other categories for Quebec skilled workers, home child care, caring for children, and agri-food pilot. And all of them have pretty similar requirements, which just a few minor details changed. So select the program that you are applying for, and read the criteria and if you meet this criteria you may be eligible for an open work permit a bridging open work permit all right so the next category of open work permit in the same permanent residence on paper category is the regular open work permit all right so it says here you may be eligible for a regular open work permit if you're applying or have applied for permanent residence under the spouse or common law partner in canada class or the humanitarian and compassionate grounds so let's look at the spouse or common law in Canada class. So basically what this means is if you are being sponsored by your spouse who is a PR in Canada and you the applicant is also in Canada, then you can qualify for open work permit. Remember, this is inland sponsorship application that allows you to also apply for open work permit. If your sponsor is in Canada and they are sponsoring you for permanent residence of Canada, but you, the applicant, are outside of Canada, then it becomes an outplanned application for spousal sponsorship. And right now, you do not qualify for open work permit. Okay, so don't be confused. If you are an outplanned applicant for spousal sponsorship, then you cannot apply for open work permit. You can only apply for open work permit if you are an inland or spouse or common law partner in Canada class applicant. All right. So if you click on this link, you'll get to this help center page where it tells you all about the spouse or common law partner in Canada class application. So to apply for the open work permit for in Canada class sponsorship application, there's two ways to do that. Number one, assuming that you haven't applied for permanent residence yet. So you are in Canada with your spouse and you're thinking to apply for permanent residence in Canada. Then what you can do is you can send your sponsorship application along with your open work permit application together offline. Okay. That is not online yet. So if I click on this link, your spouse hasn't applied for permanent residence yet. Okay. So there's two options within this. If you mail your application, which means the traditional offline route, then it says here, you can put the sponsorship PR and open work permit applications in one envelope. Make sure all supporting documents and proof of payment is included. And you can send the envelope to the case processing center. This is pretty straightforward. Okay. So you can combine your open work permit and PR applications. If you are in Canada and being sponsored. All right. So. The next option you have is if they apply online. So this is not going to be open for all candidates. You may or may not randomly be selected to apply for online in Canada class application for spousal sponsorship. If you are, then you can still apply for open work permit. All right. But there are some conditions. It says once you receive your AOR acknowledgement of receipt letter, then you can apply for open work permit online. Okay. But I'm guessing that this online application for in Canada class is random. So don't rely on it. I would go with this route, the offline application where you mail in your application for permanent residence, just combine your open work permit and send it along with it. Okay. Then your open work permit may be approved while you wait for your permanent residence application to come through. The only requirement is you stay in Canada and you maintain your valid status. All right. Now, 
if you've already sent your permanent residence application in Canada, so you've already applied the in Canada class spousal sponsorship, you can apply for open work permit and it gives you all the details about how you can do that. So once you receive your acknowledgement of receipt, you can now apply for open work permit. So you'll have to wait until you receive your acknowledgement of receipt or AOR to apply for open work permit. Okay. And once you receive the AOR, then you can do this online. All right. So that is what the in Canada class spousal sponsorship and open work permit application is all about. You can combine the two if you've not already applied, but are in Canada. And if you've already applied, wait for AOR. Once you get that, then you can submit the open work permit application. So remember the difference for in Canada class, you can apply for open work permit for outland applicants for spousal sponsorship. You cannot apply for open work permit. All right, then you can also apply for the regular open work permit if you classify under the humanitarian and compassionate grounds. Now, I don't know much about the humanitarian and compassionate grounds. There's a lot of documents that you need to prove that you really classify under this category and then you can apply under this class. This application is through the permanent residence online portal. So I've made an entire video on how to use the online portal and how to submit your application using that portal. It should be showing up on the cards here and linked in the description below. But my guess is for the majority of candidates out there, this is not going to apply. Okay. And I don't know much about this one yet. So maybe this is content for another video, but I just wanted to stress the sponsorship applicants class first. So if you come back to this page, we just went over these two categories. Now, if you are a provincial nominee who has not yet applied for permanent residence, so let's select this category, you hit submit. So if you are nominated by a province, but you haven't applied for a permanent residence yet, then you are eligible for employer specific work permit, which means not open work permit, but an employer specific. So you will need a job offer to apply for this kind of work permit. All right. So it tells you the things that you need. Number one, you'll need a letter from your province, which confirms your nomination. You are going to need a job offer from an employer from that province. Number three, you are going to need a statement from the province that identifies the job and employer and states that all these conditions are met. All right. So you need to have all these three conditions met if you have not applied for permanent residence, but have been nominated by a province, then you can apply for a work permit. You can apply for a work permit even before your permanent residence application. So apply for the work permit, come to Canada. And while you work, you can apply for your permanent residence application and wait until it comes through. All right. All right. So still with me, we are still in the permanent residence category. Okay. So we just looked at the first three. Let's look at the fourth one. You hold a certificate of selection and you have not yet applied for permanent residence. Obviously this is for Quebec. So if you've applied for permanent residence under Quebec selected skilled worker program, if you select yes, then you may be able to apply for an open work permit as long as you meet these criteria right here. Okay. And you, you can read all about that here. And if you select no, then you will have to apply for a job specific work permit. So if I select that again and I select no, I am eligible for employer specific. Okay. So which means this would require a valid job offer. All right. So for Quebec permanent residence, there's two categories. Yes and no. If you select yes, you are eligible for open work permit. If you select no, then you're eligible for employer specific work permit. All right. All right. So the final one is you're a family member who has been included in the application for permanent residence. All right. So if you click this and hit submit, then basically if you have been included under the permanent residence application for any of these programs, which means the main applicant, your spouse, who may have applied for any one of these programs and has added you as a family member in their application, then you may be eligible for an open work permit. Okay. So we already went over a lot of these. So I don't think I need to reiterate, but this is the open work permit for family members, which means you are a dependent or an added family member to the main applicant. Okay. So next let's look at the temporary category. So if you are the spouse, or family member of someone who's working or studying temporarily, which means either your spouse has a work permit to work in Canada or they are international students studying in one of those designated institutions that we talked about. Then as a dependent or as a spouse, you can apply for open work permit. So if you select this option and click submit, 
you'll get to this page and it's going to give you all the categories. So the first category is a spouse of a skilled worker in an occupation under the NOC skill 0AB approved to work in Canada six months or longer. So at this point, you must know what an NOC code is. If you don't, I've made an entire video explaining various types of NOC codes and how to find them it should be showing up on the cards here and linked in the description below. So if your husband or wife is temporarily working in Canada under these NOC codes, under type 0, A or B, then you can apply for an open work permit. You can also apply for an open work permit if your spouse is an international student studying at a public post-secondary school such as college or university or a CEGEP in Quebec. All right. So if they're a student and their student status is valid, they have a valid study permit, then you can apply as a spouse for an open work permit. All right. So now that you've identified your eligibility, you can actually begin to procure your documents and find out the application packet for your specific program. So the way you do that is select any of the programs that apply to you here. Let's go with the applying for permanent residence on paper. Hit submit. Then you'll get to this page. Scroll down all the way where it says apply for a work permit. So click on this link and then this is where you will make the selection. So let's assume you're applying for outside Canada. Okay, so you have three options outside, inside and port of entry. Let's just select outside Canada and you'll click on get the application to work in Canada. All right. And the application to work in Canada work permits, including open work permit page is going to open up. All right. Then it's going to ask you again, how are you applying? So obviously select the online one because it's recommended. Then where are you applying from? This is where you will select your country because remember you chose outside Canada. So let's assume India for this example. And then you will get the instruction guide. So click on this instruction guide and open it. So the guide 5487 applying for a work permit outside Canada is going to open up. This is where you'll find all your documents that you need to submit and all the forms that you need to fill out and how to actually submit those forms. So I'm going to be covering all that in the next video, but I just want to show you that under step two is where all your application forms are. So you have to submit all these forms and upload online. All right. So the way you do that is you go back up and then under step four, submit the application, you click on apply online. All right. So if you click here, you'll be given the option to either register if you don't have an account or sign in with your GC key if you already have an account. And this is where you'll go into the online portal for application for open work permit. You'll have to answer a bunch of questions again to determine your eligibility. And then you'll be able to upload all your documents and forms in that portal. So this, all of that is going to be covered in the next video, which I'm going to be releasing next week. All right. So that was all about the open work permit process. It's really not that hard to meet the eligibility as long as you submit all the right documents, which is going to be my next video. I'll cover all the forms and supporting documents you need to complete your open work permit application should be coming out in a week. So stay tuned. That's been it for this video. This is Suyesh from Hit Submit and Canada signing off. I'll see you in the next one. Good night.